Hey everybody, I've got a video here for you today. Now sticking on the Mound Builders theme, I want to take you into a site here in St. Paul, Minnesota called Indian Mounds Park. I have talked about this once before and I will leave the link for that below. And in that video, I just talk about Orion and how I think the three major mounds here were a depiction of the belt stars of Orion. But with that said, I just want to take in here and give you a good look at this from ground level real quick. But what we have here today are about half a dozen mounds that still exist. There was maybe as many as three or four dozen mounds that once existed in this site. And I'm going to go into a little bit of history of that. But this is what the park looks like today. And these are the few remaining mounds. And this overlooks the Mississippi River. And this is very near the confluence of the Mississippi and the Minnesota River. Also the St. Croix River flows into the Mississippi very near here. So this would have been a pretty important site because the ancient people used the rivers as the highways to get around back in ancient times. Now, I found a website here that I thought was incredibly interesting because this has a detailed excavation records of what was found in these mounds and how they were built. It says the six burial mounds in Indian Park, Indian Mounds Park in St. Paul, Minnesota are all that remain of the three to four dozen mounds that once lined the bluffs. The others were destroyed in the development along the bluffs that occurred in the last half of the 1800s. Approximately 2,000 years of local history was nearly erased during those five decades. And it talks about T.H. Lewis, and he is the one who did the excavation, and he recorded what he found in a pretty good detailed record. It says, some of the decisions made in those days come as a surprise to our 21st century mindset. A surprise? Uh, yeah. But mainly, they just pissed me off. And mainly because of this decision here it says in 1895 mound number eight and i will show you the mounds and how they are numbered it says in 1895 this mound was graded away by orders of the park board in order that a better view of the river might be had from the street so you had the park board in saint paul minnesota removing some of these mounds maybe as old as you know a thousand or two 2,000 years old, they had them removed just so the rich people who lived along the bluff could have a better view of the street. But I found T.H. Uh, Lewis's work here, and this is how the mounds are numbered and where they once stood. Some of them have just, the bluff has been eroded away and they have fallen off. Others were purposely removed by idiots in St. Paul a little over 100 years ago. And here you see the three main mounds, 11, 9, and 7, they are numbered. And I just thought that they look like the belt stars of Orion. But I just found uh, some of the detailed excavation work very interesting. Certain things I just found uh, very interesting. It says, mound number 5. It says, Dr. de Montreville states that on the 2nd of July, 1867, an indistinct mound, number 5, was opened. Near the center, at the depth of 3 feet 10 inches from the surface, were the skeletons of a male about 5 feet 11 inches in height, not a giant, also what is thought to be the skeleton of a female about 5 feet in height, the former in a good state of preservation. The two skeletons lay in very close juxtaposition. In fact, the bones may be said to be commingled, and they were apparently laid upon their sides facing each other. The most notable feature was the almost entire absence of the bones of the skull. The most careful research failed to discover more than what might be thought to be a minute portion of the cranium bones. So I just thought that was pretty, uh, pretty fascinating. Obviously, a couple was buried together facing each other. And uh, this, I'm going to leave the link, of course, for this below. But this goes into how these mounds were actually built. And it talks about different colored soil, um, different materials that were put in. And actually, there was like a limestone floor and boxes in these mounds. 
And I just found this incredibly fascinating. Uh, people think the mounds are just earthen mounds and there is some sophistication to the building of these mounds. And I think these excavation records are very fascinating. But I wanted to look for um, anything that really jumped out at me as far as being unique and that I could connect it to some sort of different culture. And one thing really jumped out at me. This is the only thing I thought was really, you know, unique and that I could place it to a different culture. And it says this. On this, and this talks about, uh, I believe, mound number three or four. It says, the facial bones of the skull in question had been covered with red clay. Thus, and it says, um, it talks about skulls being found in, in mound number three. And it says, the skull in question had been covered with red clay, thus producing an image of the original face. Unfortunately, the pressure of the earth around it had forced it somewhat to one side and out of shape, and the small portion of clay covering the lower jaw fell to pieces, thus exposing the bone and teeth. Apparently, the back and the top of the skull is wanting, but from general appearances, this portion has been pushed inward. From the size of the skull and teeth, it is evident that this belonged to a child of about five years of age. So, um, when I read that, that they were using red clay and putting it over the face, producing an image of the original face of this child, and it was probably an important child in the community, and obviously died at an early tragic age. But where does this uh, death mask, where they try to recreate the image of the face come from? Well, it comes from Mesoamerica and the Aztecs and the Mayans. And I just want to read a little bit of this website here. It says, gradual movement from individual life to dissolution in the life force, metaphorically a journey fraught with danger and difficulty in all Mesoamerican myths, begins with separation and detachment from human society, continues through the intervening liminal state, and ends in the mysterious hitherto inaccessible world of the spirit. Through that metaphor of the journey, as well as the metaphorical funeral, funerary mask, the cultures of Mesoamerica attempted to comprehend the mystery of life and death, to convert what would seem to be the finality of the end of life into the passage into the essence of life. It says life's continuation was a message conveyed by all cycles of death and regeneration making up the natural world in which man existed. These cycles found their clearest example in the daily and yearly movement of the sun which provided the basic framework for much of Mesoamerican cosmology and served as the ideal metaphor for the dualistic cyclical order of the cosmos, particularly for the co contemporary opposites of matter and spirit, life and death. Just as the sun made the inevitable passage from the life of day to the underworld, followed by a return to life, so man's spirit would repeat the endless pattern and return to life again. Symbolically, then, life existed within death and death within life. The funerary mask symbolized that unity. It says, but unlike man's first biological birth, the beginning of the new spiritual existence does not happen naturally. It is not given, but must be ritually created, and this in Mesoamerica was the task of the funerary ritual, and particularly of the funerary mask. Since death was seen as a transformation rather than an end, it seems natural that cremation was widely practiced in Mesoamerica. It says fire, the great transformational agent, could transform the material into the spiritual and thus free the spirit from the body. The Aztec funerary ritual associated, associated with cremation of rulers suggested precisely this view. Before cremation, the ruler's body was elaborately arrayed in a mask in the costume of a god. And as fire consumed his body, his spirit started on the journey that would end in his becoming the god in whose attire he had been arrayed. When the body was not cremated, the funerary mask, whether placed over the face of the deceased, buried in the tomb, or placed on the funerary bundle, served exactly as the same symbolic purpose as the crematory fire. It was both catalyst and metaphor for the transformation of the material reality into the spiritual essence. 
Thus, funerary mass function like other ritual mass to express visually the inner spiritual identity of the wearer which survives the death of the body. Portrait mask recreating the physical face of the deceased common among the Maya reflected the belief that through the course of his life, the person had created a face that expressed his deified heart. So that is a direct connection between the way the mound builders buried some of their dead and the Mayans. And going back to Google Earth here, um, I don't think we can ignore all the similarities between the Mayan culture and the mound builders culture. I have showed how uh, they seem to honor Orion in a special way. Their symbology is incredibly like the Mayans. And if we have a great mystery regarding the Mayans around 900 AD, people say that they just up and disappeared and it's a great mystery where they went to. And around the same time, there was a bad drought in Mesoamerica and Mexico. So where would you go if there was a bad drought? Would you go south where it's hotter or north where the temperature is a little more climate? The Mayans uh, lived in southern Mexico and down in Central America. So where would they have gone? They would have gone up. They would have used uh, the waterways to travel. They would have entered the lower rivers or the southern rivers of the United States and gone up. And that's exactly what they did. This all makes sense. The Mayans uh, moved up when the Mound Builders Society, it is said that was started around 1000 AD. This corresponds to when they left Mexico about a century before that. They became the Mound Builders of America. Hope you thought this was interesting. You have a nice day.